What's going on everyone? I'm Patrick the MPH and this week school opened back up so I thought this would be a great time for me to share with you all what I did for my Masters in Public Health capstone project back in 2019. I made a comic. One of the biggest and growing needs in public health is communications and to be more specific, creative communications. A study published in 2018 by Myers and Goldberg highlighted how graphics have become a more powerful tool in communicating health across diverse audiences. In that same year, another study was published by Oshwal and Thomas explaining how comics are a great medium for adults to learn different aspects of health. I'm going to put the links for both of those studies in the description, yeah. in the description below. Got it that time. These studies aren't saying that there isn't anything you can learn from while you're at a clinic or a student health center. Remember those little pamphlets with probably one or two pictures and when you open it up, it's like a whole bunch of text in it? They're good at what they're meant to do, providing information for whatever health topic you're reading about. But I'm gonna ask you this, where's the sauce? Where's the story that reels me in as a reader or someone that could be interested or concerned about the health topic? that this pamphlet is you know, informing me about. And also, the pamphlets are good, but they could probably use an extra step when it comes to being creative. That's where comics come in. Before COVID, one of the biggest health concerns that was going on in the United States was substance abuse. And my goal for my capstone project was to create a comic that highlights different short stories about substance abuse and what that can look like. So after a whole bunch of research, lots of drawing, and trying to keep a level head with all these other graduate level classes I was taking, I finally finished the project. My Substance Abuse Comic. And it's titled Substance Abuse, A Series to Bring Awareness. And yep, legit, it's got pages and everything. Before I start digging in deep, this is a reading comics page just to kind of introduce people to how to read comics if they're you know new to the genre. On the back of the cover, I have a little, I guess, word or note from the author. Substance abuse is nothing to take lightly. Across the nation, people have lost friends and loved ones to addiction. This is meant to bring awareness to substance abuse on multiple levels. This is not intended to glorify addiction, discriminate against users, or sway individuals from the intended purpose of drugs prescribed by health professionals, but to educate and encourage the conversation against substance abuse. So that is what it's about. So now going in, the first short story is called Focus. And there's a little, little guy here, cute cartoon looking thing unrealistic definitely but it's a comic but it's about a young black college student named Ben who's getting ready to take his midterms but also struggling in classes and trying to maintain his job at the part-time lab but one day he runs into Addy which is the little character from the title page and he's pretty much you know saying oh I can help you out with all these struggles you're going through and Ben is at first saying you know what no I don't need your help I'm gonna just keep walking but Addie changes his mind by saying this. Your parents sacrificed so much for you to be in college. They'd love to know you can handle studies and your job at the lab. So Ben accepts Addie's help and he ended up passing his midterms as well. So he let Addie help him every time there was a project, exam, or if he just had too much on his plate. So after Ben graduated, he left Addie behind, he started a career, and he got married. But he was having a hard time focusing when it came to work. So he let Addy back in to help him out. And one thing I made sure I included was that Ben risked everything to welcome Addy back into his life. Like you see him with his wife and then Addy in the background, but this is the turning point of the story. They were trying to have a baby, but they were having complications. So Ben went to the doctor and the doctor tells him, we found traces of Adderall in your system, which explains your low sperm count and sexual impotence. It also coincides with your low body weight, jittery behavior, and difficulty focusing. If you keep this up, then the side effects will do more damage to not only yourself, 
but to those you love as well. And when Ben hears that, he tears up, saying, you're right, I do need help. So that's Ben realizing what he's doing and the effect that it's having on the people around him. Like, he is getting in the way of starting his own family, which, to some people, is a very big deal and very important part of life. To go back to this, uh, the doctor says there are places in Richmond that offer help for you and others going through substance addiction. It's best that you share these developments with your wife. And also opening the conversation out to people that you love that could be affecting them, saying this is what's going on, this is why this could be happening. So Ben followed the doctor's advice and spoke to his wife about his addiction. And that's, you know, both of them opening the door, revealing Addie, mad not wearing his glasses. That's how you know. And Ben swore to take the journey to recovery for himself and his family. And that's how the first story closes. And the second story is called Friends, which is about two kids, uh, Daniel and Eden. Daniel is more by the books, follows the rules, and Eden is more carefree. And they've known each other since they were young kids, probably like eight years old. But when high school came in, Daniel noticed that Eden started hanging out with some wrong crowds and started doing some risky behaviors like smoking. Daniel makes a point to note that it never stopped them from becoming friends. One day, Eden got into a car accident and got banged up really bad, but Daniel was still there by his side, taking him to his therapy sessions and also driving him to wherever he needed to go. The one car drive when Daniel asked how therapy was, Eden said my leg is getting better at supporting his weight and the opioid stuff was making him feel amazing. Then Daniel realizes, wait, I thought your prescription ended a while ago. But then Eden says his buddy had a leftover supply from his dad's surgery so he doesn't have to worry about asking the doctor for more. But Daniel says, sounds good, I'll see you later. Fast forward eight months later, we see Daniel talking to a counselor, saying that he should have said more that day while he was in the car driving Eden. Turns out, Eden didn't contact him since that day. Andy found out that Eden moved in with his friend that gave him all the extra opioids, and even got into heroin through that. So Daniel asked the counselor what he can do to get his friend back. The counselor replies, speaking up has a unique way of bringing people together. Talk with Eden in a positive manner and avoid any judgments. Most importantly, go to him as a friend. So Daniel goes to where Eden is staying to see him. When they first see each other, the conversation seems to pick up like it never left. Uh, Eden says, is that you, Daniel? The beard looks good, man. How long has it been? And Daniel says, too long. How are you? Eden replies, I've had better days. Daniel says, I know, and I'm worried. If it's cool, can we talk for a minute? Of course we can. So to conclude, Daniel shares that he talked and told him that he missed hanging out with his best friend, also mentioning a few places in Richmond that provide housing, medicated assisted treatment, and counseling. It took some time for him to make the final choice, but my continued visits encouraged Eden to make a change for the better. He made it through the registration process at one of the treatment centers, so his journey is about to begin. That is the end of the second story. And to conclude uh, the comic, uh, I have some like, I guess some factoids about what Adderall, opioids, and heroin actually do to you. Also some places to go in Richmond if you need help or know someone that might need help. And on the back, SAMHSA's national helpline number. So that was the comic, and it was definitely interesting trying to figure out how to create and inform about these different uh, types of substance abuse. But the next part of the capstone was actually obtaining measurable results. So this is what some of the people said. And we got different backgrounds like graphic designers, epidemiologists, and other health professionals to actually look over and provide their two cents. And this is what a few of them said. For the focus storyline, Someone said, I thought that the dialogue between the drug and the character was believable and relatable. Ben's thought process set stakes and gave us insight into why someone might use Adderall and then how the thought process hardens with dependency. Like he's in too deep now and he has to keep going. He's nothing without it. Someone else said the storyline showed the slow tolerance effect over time and linked it to the medical outcomes. 
For the friend storyline, this is what someone said. I like that this was positioned as more of a friend story and a therapist's office was a clever narrative device for inserting some advice about how one might approach an addict without seeming too shoehorned in. I'm also really glad that you made it clear that it was through many attempts at intervention that a change was made. Much more realistic. But the physical change in Eden could be dialed back a bit as it's kind of grotesque and stigmatizing. Someone else said, I have a hard time with stories that emphasize the responsibility of friends and others' addictions. So I definitely appreciate everyone's critiques and responses to reading the substance abuse comic, which, you know, means a lot, of course. I'm gonna have to, you know, dial it back when it comes to showcasing what substance abuse looks like on people. And that's kind of the tricky thing when it comes to art. You don't wanna make it too grotesque or unappealing or scary but at the same time you have to show what the side effects are but this is what they said in response to the entire substance abuse comic i like that both characters had their humanity left intact in general they remain lovable slash relatable characters with moderately complex feelings for the length of the story i thought that the dialogue and writing was very good it felt real another person said where you leave the story makes the comic seem like it's a happy ending. You end right at the place many people might call the beginning. The difficult, longest, and most untold parts of the story is the recovery. And the third person said, the relatability, the graphics, and the stories were all amazing. And I hope this inspires some of you to make some creative public health works, whether it be for your capstone, your practicum, or even if you're at work. That way we can have a new take on learning how to improve our health. I'll see you all next time.